Hi class, Professor Brennan. This will be our last part three of understanding leadership in the small group for my small group communication class. This will be the last video. And we are going to start by talking about distributive leadership theory. Let's go. Okay, what is this theory? So here is a small group communication theory called distributive leadership theory. And basically, it's founded on the premise that leadership is a property of the group. That leadership and followership, if you will, are intertwined and that they cannot be separated from each other. Okay? So it means if they're intertwined, if they're inter interdependent in this way, the leader needs the followers as much as the followers need the leader. And that they, I want you to think about what we learned about communication, right? Communication is a transactional process in which people simultane simultaneously create, interpret, and negotiate shared meaning. Remember that? So here we are. This theory says leadership is the property of the group. So, so that means, what does that mean? What does that mean? That means that what happens in the group, you can't just point to the leader and blame it. Leadership is the property of the group. It belongs to the group. Let's look at this in more in depth. Okay. Leaders and followers together create and determine the dynamics of the group. Followers are not passive. So together, they create the dynamics. This is what this theory states. They're interdependent. The interplay between the leader and other group members is complicated and often results in push-pull tension. So that's what this theory says. This theory states that in groups, small group leadership, and I'm assuming that's what they're talking about actually in here because it comes from a small group communication book, because you can't really see the same thing happening if you have so many people and you're a leader. But in a small group, there's this push-pull thing that happens. Everybody will create, interpret, and negotiate shared meaning. It's normal to have this push-pull between them as you're trying to sort out and figure out what's what, what's my part, what's your part. You're the leader, but I'm also working with you. All right? So there's some egalitarian e equality here. And acknowledges, it also acknowledges and recognizes tension provides an opportunity, okay, like conflict, provides an opportunity for leaders and followers to learn about human relationships. So whatever is happening in your group, if you apply this theory, these are opportunities for your growth, for your personal growth. If you're having push-pull tension, it's going to show you something about yourself. Not so much about the other person. We always think it's about the other person. It's really about ourselves. How are we responding? Why are we responding that way? How do we apply it to a group? Be perceptive and analyze the needs of the group. So we're going to apply this theory to the group. Adapt your behavior to the needs of the group. Be a completer. Focus primarily on tasks rather than social relationships. So if you want to make leadership the property of the group, this is how you do it. Think about the needs of the group, adapt your paper, and this is be a completer. This is also really focusing also on what the leader is supposed to do, right? Balance your participation with good listening. Express yourself clearly and concisely. Know what your group processes are and your group techniques. And as a member of the group, you need to know this as well. So this is both for the leaders and the other members of the group. Be willing to plan, improvise, and adapt. This is key. You want to have a good group experience? You have to be able to improvise and adapt. Not everything's going to go the way you planned. Not You should always have plan B and plan C. If something doesn't work out, what's plan B? Seriously especially when it comes to your presentations. Have a backup plan. Have two backup plans. 
Know what you're going to do if something's forgotten, how you're going to adapt. This is how, this is how small groups succeed, not just in getting the project done, but how you succeed as a person and how you feel like you succeed because you have other plans, you have backup plans, and you've discussed it with your group members. Okay, moving on. Ethical guidelines in your in small group. In your small group, determine what you believe to be ethical guidelines a leader should follow. So I'm going to be having you do this with your small group agenda. Okay, you're going to have your meeting agenda this week. I want you to include this in addition to whatever you meet about. You need to include this in your meeting agenda. Okay, come up with a minimum of five ethical guidelines that you group, your group believes a leader should follow. Now I'm going to go over some examples in the next slide. I do not want you to copy them and just use them for your own. Put them in your own words. Come up with your own. Do not copy mine. Your might be similar to what I'm going to say, but come up with your own as a group. Here we go. Do not lie or intentionally send deceptive or harmful messages. Don't lie to your group. Tell the truth. If you're not uh, meeting, making your group meetings, tell, be honest with them about it. Tell them the truth. They deserve that. Uh, don't put, put the concern of your group and others ahead of your own personal gain. Small group communication is about thinking about the group, not thinking about your own personal needs. Be aware of what your needs are, but think about as you work on this project, the, uh, the needs of the group. That's what you're here to learn. Be respectful and sensitive to other members, meaning talk in a caring way. Be gentle with your words. Think about what you're going to say before you say it. Think about things. We already talked about this in communication, right? Your communication should have a purpose, especially when you're working on a project and working on a deadline. Have, think about what you're going to say and have your communication move things forward, not hold things back or hold things down. Stand behind the other members when they carry out policies and actions approved by the litter. So go along with it. If that's what they decide, stand behind them, support them. Treat members with equal respect, regardless of sex, ethnicity, or social background. I think you all in the class, as I've known you, you all have been excellent at this. I don't even have to tell you that, right? And I already noticing that it's not the same. I always tell uh, in groups, especially with those you have like one member is a female and the rest of you all guys, don't make the girl always do all the writing. Um, she's not a secretary. So be aware of being sexist, men and women. Be aware of being sexist, right? In your own way to be sexist. Be as equal as you can. Be aware of any biases you have. Establish care policies that all group members are expected to follow. So know what is expected of you. Don't expect something that's not said, not fair to people. If you expect people to be in a haven, you behave in a certain way, but you've never told them, you can't expect them to behave that way. Even if it's the norm, you have to lay it out. You have to be clear. That's the only way people know what's going on for sure. Follow the group rules just say, as you expect others to do. Okay. So if you're expecting them to do certain things, you got to do it too. So this is ethical guidelines for group leaders. All right, that's it for me. I'm over and out. Have a beautiful week and I will see you all later. This is it for understanding leadership in the small group. Bye-bye.